who would like to own this soundtrack? <laughs> Cut. Cut. <laughs> uh, oh. guys here we are on this is project precious <clears throat> project precious has had lots of love over the last few days so we've been busy we've got all the boost pipes in coolant pipes in check out these aluminium turret tops to protect obviously keeping the crud where it needs to be kept so these are handmade in aluminium and finishing our lovely crinkle finish powder coated finish and the roof is ready so check out this latest photo the lads at the paint shop have made a fantastic job the roof guys was let's just say stressful. I think I lost an inch of my hairline when that roof was um, in the making. But what we've done, we've gained about yay much behind the cab. We turned it into a king cab, some people call them. Spacious cab, double cab, whatever you want to call them. So it's going to be a space behind the seats for Jason's dog, comforties, amenities. I think he's going to put a little fridge in there. We've got a twin battery in there. You know, somewhere where his, his little terrier can sit and chill out and somewhere where he can put all his you know, it's necessities, should you say, you know. So the lads have been doing the busy bits with the gauges. Check these out. So we've gone with a nice simple Dakota. So we can keep an eye on everything, things like engine temp, oil pressures, battery voltage, fuel tank levels, the usual. What I love about the Dakota guys is that you can set warning. So if you're beyond a certain petrol or if you know that, I don't know, you've got you want to have a warning at 100 miles left in the tank, you can give it that. You can tell it a speedo warning if you're a bit of a speed freak and you always know you're getting speeding tickets. You can set things into that clock that you can't on a normal one. And I love the just the, the look of it and the aesthetics of it, guys. We've fitted these in many cars now and we've nailed it. We've got the, the calibration of these just perfect. So hope Jason's going to like that. And next week, we're going to get that tub back on it. That tub's actually been shortened by about... 400 millimeters, you wouldn't know. Please like and subscribe. Who would like to own this soundtrack? So this is a 6.2 litre LT1 8-speed automatic V8 Defender.
So guys, this is an introduction for this video. This Defender is for sale. This car was built um, about 18 months ago in our workshop in Shropshire. Its heart is a 6.2 litre LT1, coupled to an eight speed automatic. This is direct fuel injected guys. So it's more efficient than the LS3, really refined engine. It changes your gear that smooth, you can barely feel it. Really fantastic car. And for me, this is probably the best sounding car that we've actually built to date. And it sounds quiet when you want it to be quiet. And boy, does she open up when you need it to. This has got the full stage three transmission system, guys. So we've got an ATB in the center, ATB in the front axle, ATB in the rear. Ashcroft drive shafts throughout, CV joints in the front. We've got Ashcroft heavy duty drive, flat, um, drive shafts. If you look down here, we've got our maker heavy duty drive flanges, coupled with the beautiful SMC wheels. So this car is available, guys. You can skip our couple of year waiting list and get your hands on one. The interior has been beautifully retrimmed. This is in soft um, hide leather with Alcantar middle seats, Alcantar headlining. This has got a full roll cage, guys. All of our cars, I insist on having a roll cage, guys, especially if you're packing more than 300 horsepower. This car has a full quad exhaust system. Check it out in the back there. This car was totally rebuilt, guys. Nut and bolt restoration. Underside is fully um, tough coated and rust protected. This has got a Marsland galvanized chassis that's been e-coated black. Everything, guys, got taken off the car and repowder coated and redone. It's got the ORE wheel carrier. In the back, guys, we've got some flat dog storage boxes. Great for those, you know, necessities that everybody seems to carry around in their cars. We've gone with nice LED interior upgrades. Luxury carpets throughout. The car's been dynamated. There's a full spec list, guys, on our website if you'd like to have a look at that. Alcantar dash piece set. It's a lovely car, guys. It's only done 3,000 miles since we built it. So grab yourself one hell of a machine. Please like and subscribe. What's happening on this build? Currently I'm fabricating all the, the water pipes and the intercooler pipes for the, the BMW engine. So what's involved in this job? Basically everything has to be made from scratch. Um, obviously it's not meant to be in this chassis so the whole of the pipe work has to be made to fit and the big intercooler as well. This is the, the water system to the expansion tank. Um, this one, that will be blanked off. They can be used for various different um, setups so we don't always need all the pipes. So what's the next step for this now? Now I've done this, I'm going to make a jig so that I can make future ones a lot easier. Um, and same with other parts. I made the exhaust for it last week, so that's all done. Then it's off next door for wiring.
<laughs> what are you doing there, Louis? Um, the same. <laughs> I'm being there. <laughs> So, I know I can't swear on YouTube, but Gwyn wants to call this car the beautiful bee turd. Erd, is that how you say it? Is that swearing? Bass erd. Bass erd. But anyway, it's in. Hopefully in the next few days it's going to be running. And I want to say by Friday, it should probably be out on its own steam. So stay tuned. So guys, if you have not bought your tickets already, five pound a ticket can win this 200,000 pound defender. So if you head over to Raffle, there's a link on my Instagram. There'll be a link attached to this YouTube video, right? To buy your tickets for this, guys. If we go over the target of tickets, I'm gonna give the sum to charity, guys. We're not gonna say yet because we need to obviously return X value to a customer first to keep him happy. And the rest is gonna to go to a charity close to my heart. What you see here, guys, is one hell of a machine, and it's mostly, most definitely worth more than a fiver. So this is Liam's gearbox and this is Liam's truck. Those that watch the channel recognize this from the last couple of episodes. This is one we did the valeting on and the paint protection. It's dirty again, surprise, surprise, because it's lovely weather we've been having. Anyway, this is the gearbox. So Liam took it back, remapped from ourselves. We fitted the big tires and everything. And then he told me, Dave, my clutch is now slipping. So we're pulling the box out and while it's out, we're changing the shaft. This is a loft one piece shaft that gets rid of this. See that two piece? Some of you might be familiar if you own a Puma, when you accelerate, reverse, forward, backwards, you get that dung, dung. That's the play in here, and normally in your shafts. So we're getting rid of this clunk for him and fitting him a heavy duty clutch while we're in there. So this is the heavy duty clutch that's gonna be going in there, supplied by Luke at Loft Clutches. Highly recommend his product. We've been using them for a few years now and they do what they say on the tin guys and last well. Putting the roll cage into this 110 today. What can you tell me about it? It's a safety device. 
Caught. Caught. Uh, oh. Today we're gonna fit, um, well, uh, today and tomorrow maybe. <laughs> um, internal, external, external roll cage made by safe, safety device. Good. So it's a safety device's roll cage. Yeah. Is it a, how many points of contact does it have? It's gonna be a leg that goes here, inside there, the wing, bolts to the chassis, and then the bolts here to the roll, to the roll cage. Yeah. It's gonna be another one over here. It's got a um, bracket that goes inside there, and uh, another one goes uh, in here somewhere, I think. Cool. So this involves... And, uh, and another one here in the back, so you've got like three points on each side. Cool. And from the, for the inside bit, uh, this pulls to the brackets that hold the body to the... The chassis there are two brackets here yeah so they you're gonna drill it through and bolt it there do they attach to the side here or to yeah, the roof there the... is a bolt that goes here where the old um, seat belt is you bolt it through there and you're gonna bolt the um, seat belt in this in this knot here and then there are another two two bolts that go on top of the roof you see that bracket there Yeah. Cool. So you've got the blue tape out. Yeah. To go from external to the inside, we need to cut out yeah, from here, don't we? We're gonna have to build it, the external cage. Put it on. Mark. Mark the where where it sits. Cut it, and after put it, take it off. Cut it. Uh, after that put it back on and fit it. So this really nice example of a 110 own, is owned by a guy, Tom Waring, good customer of ours. He brought this vehicle to us because his son and himself did a really good trip raising money for charities from London to Singapore, which is why I can't emphasize enough guys, when people go overlanding and off-road, etc., please have a roll cage. If you're unfortunate to have one guys, please try and put some structural support in there using interior boxes or something like that because these are soft skin vehicles and they do crumple very easily. Hence why this one is now here for a full safety devices roll cage. We're fitting it for him. It goes through the body here in the holes, down to the chassis in about six different places. So this will save a defender in the event of an accident, guys. So if you are doing any crazy trips like London to Singapore, please fit an ex very expensive roll cage. please like and subscribe.
So here we are, this is the mobile chassis jig. And for those of you that have been a follower for some time, you recognize this jig. We've built, should I say rebuilt many of cars on this. So it's seen three quarter repairs, rear end repairs, front outriggers, mid riggers, full chassis builds guys. And many of you probably say, why aren't you just putting a new chassis under it? Because this chassis is off to the USA. The end goal for our client, Greg, um, is to have this car at his home, I think in South America. So as you know, we need matching numbers, original chassis, etc. And this CD5 came in and it looked immaculate, guys. When I saw it, when I first took delivery of it, I thought, this car doesn't need any work. Quick steam clean and the paint and the ice blast underneath, it'd be ready to go. But we were wrong. Somebody had got the filler out and decided to hide things. Things like rotten outriggers. Check these photos out, look over there. Yeah, I've got this going around that side, but you can see it better. So the rear outrigger had some Bondo and filler in there, a lot of bodgery, wizardry. And Dan has been busy today chopping this out and making in some new sections, as you see over there, the one that he's finished earlier. So this chassis will be going into the booth next, having a full blast treatment, literally blast everything off it because it's got lovely wax oil on it. And we all know what I think about lovely wax oil. That's getting gone and we're going to be painting it in our three stage paint treatment. So stay tuned to see what happens with this. So guys, for those of you that don't recognize this, and I'm sure Paul its owner won't, this is Mr. Ed. And this project is probably, a f well, it is a mighty fine example of how a project grows legs when they enter this workshop. This came in for seats to be moved back four inches, new B posts, a bit of welding in the back end, and new rear door, and this happened. Oh, and a chassis treatment. So I'm going to tell you exactly how this happened is because I don't like le letting cars leave here, guys, with filler in the sills, uh, let's say crud everywhere. So this rear tub, guys, I couldn't, I couldn't do it to my client, which is Paul, because it was just not right and it, wasn't, it just wasn't good enough. So there was too much rust everywhere. So I said, look, well, let's put a Puma tub on the back. Let's go for a nice upgrade. We've done some really cool seat mods by moving the seats back. The, the tub is currently in the paint shop getting painted to the exact RAL body colour. That'll be going back together, guys, and stay tuned in for next week when it goes back together. So what you see here, guys, is this is our M57. And for those of you that don't know, we love this engine. This engine is the most reliable power plant that you can ever put in a Defender. And what you see behind it, guys, is a 6 HP. That's a BMW six-speed automatic box. We love those gearboxes, very simple. This is what we installed in Miami, one of the first automatic BMWs we ever did. And what we're doing today is we're making some BMW mounts. So this is a House of Torques adapter. Those there are my engine mounts, and I am making this system so I can sell a full kit with my engines, my automatic gearboxes, Winchester gears, beautiful stage shoe transfer case, and I can sell a mount off the, off the shelf, basically. Numerous companies have made mounts, guys, and you know they work, they're functional, but I believe there's too much vibration involved. So I'm gonna go with what I know, and I'm gonna build my own. So they will be available for those of you that wanna do a DIY package and do it properly and follow welding conformities etc so guys thank you for watching this episode and thank you for supporting me as a business and a channel and i just want to say please like and subscribe and please share this page guys and if you haven't already buy a ticket to wombat guys we need to get these tickets sold because i want to give some money to charity and i also need to get my customer weighed in and i also want to build another car that with a twist so Keep tuning in, guys. I'll see you again soon.